let's make do with this. Uh, why are Obota Etsene? Okay. Good evening to. Good evening to all of you. So this topic is going to be very quite exciting. Sorry about the network problem. But my audio, if my audio is not loud enough, you let me know. I currently cannot see um, uh, messages popping up. And my admin, please follow up the messages. I think I'll use this other phone to, to monitor uh, the messages that are popping up. Today is quite very interesting because be talking about a uh, very 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 critical aspects of our history as a people and we're going to be relating it with uh, some um, recent trends uh, <laughs> uh, I remember that uh, it was on Sunday money that someone that sent me today is making it a week that someone has sent me a message uh, by the Biafra people saying that uh, they are no longer to be identified with the word Biafra and they should not be identified with the word Hindu nation. Uh, I was on my way from Lagos to Benin when I was told. Uh, I'm always on my laptop. I had to quickly type something which I called facts about Paidu. All right. Uh, in order for people to be abreast, we're not saying anybody shouldn't use the name of our forebears uh, to form a nation that they wish to form. All right. But two things or three things are involved. They first of all will have to take permission from us. Uh, before they can go ahead to use uh, one of our fathers. I use the word one of our fathers because uh, we've had an extensive intellectual discussion on this platform a couple of times. We have had to establish the concept of Paidu, where I had to say where Paidu was born. But uh, what has eluded us before now was that um, who gave birth to Paidu? Who gave birth to Paidu? All right, it's it's a concept of our history that has a leader eluded us for a while, until uh, until about two weeks ago. Uh, some of the uh, works of some of our past notable historians, uh, I was able to decode from the folklore and songs that have been passed. From generations to generations about who was Paidu's father who was Paidu's father all right anybody can claim ownership of anybody most especially civilizations that was built about uh, the civilizations of the Edo people uh, Edo civilization is one of the most talked about civilization in the entire West Africa because we've been able to build uh, uh, something that is envied is something that all the civilizations or other lesser civilizations point clear lesser civilizations would have loved to have i've always said to our people that we have we have history that uh, is bested by none in this part of the world and um, i will indulge or privy indulgence of our people to use the history if we can be able to use the history that we have to build a future for our people it's the contest is now is the future we are the history not deniable that is why a door is always at the mouth of every passerby everyone who wants to gain relevance historical relevance in present-day nigeria most especially 
Southern Nigeria must want to use um, a do to shine. We understand that. We also must understand that we have uh, drifted from the priority of our history uh, to the figments of entertainment. Uh, like uh, a brother made made a post uh, about uh, an Edo day, something, something that was going to take place on the 23rd of December in France. One of my respectable brother, a friend who would attend uh, no no who would do a lot. Uh, he understands what I stand for and understand what he stands for too. Quickly commenting, I said that uh, we have seen a lot of Edo people denigrating and embarrassing us on social media. What the Edo people on diaspora have engaged their own, themselves in is frivolity of entertainment. One wouldn't say that entertainment is not good. I am not saying that entertainment is not good. We are the reason why we, or we criticize our money. We go, go. I'm not criticizing those people who are happy. But what we are saying is that there, this is a time that our history has been best tried. And we need to put on our thinking cap and find solutions to a problem. So we feel ashamed of our people in diaspora, basically, because they've not been able to provide solutions to the inattitude of our people in diaspora. And then that's the point that they raised, that, for example, the Adeyin Card got some, who has constituted nuisance for a while, was pinned down by the Yoruba diasporans. And how come the Edo people that is practically almost having the largest diaspora numbers has not been able to do something about those diaspora destitutes? Yet, every day, every, every week, we continue to hear that this one is doing party, this one is doing an entertainment show, and this one is doing something. Say that we are comfortable with the problems. If anybody misbehaves and denigrates our people and is home-based, I receive countless of calls that is Odu or Rowa. There's nothing you've been able to do about Abi Manitia Bog, Funu Gedo, Funu Gedo. But when you read a webo, why would Darling and if you knew get do in diaspora? So we are all sleeping. He said we are more interested in frivolities of uh, modern day, uh, uh, what I would call societal misdemeanor. So we have to prioritize what is our problem. If you love a donation, you have to do something about it. There are a lot of destitute that call, in, that call themselves social media presenters. What have the adult people been able to do about those idiots in France, those idiots in Germany, those idiots in, in, in Italy, and all of that? What have the adult people been able to do that to bring those people to justice using the justice system of the countries that some of these people reside on? These are some of the issues that... We should start reflecting on basically as a people because it's no longer getting funny. So I'm I'm inspiring, I'm speaking to our people today. Ari Maya Niredo, Walao, all of those non-important issues about fun, entertainment, and events. It's not necessary at this time where our our history, our land, the progress of our people are being tried. You said we have to focus on what will bring again, once again, the greatness of our land. So all of those people constituting nuisance should be okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I said uh, I've been told that my audio is not loud enough. Is it good now? Is my audio better? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good now. So, uh, on even it time, <clears throat> I'm actually shouting on the top of my voice. Uh, I think uh, you people should hear. So, we should stop dwelling on the frivolities of history. And uh, let's... Let's... Get, let's face our work head on. I haven't said that. I wrote quick facts about um, Paidu. 
All right. Sorry, I I, I, I can't follow your commentaries. Uh, all right. In my when so a network I was no no ba. I you digging a, a, a post a, a comment in a man make. So, but all I can say categorically is that uh, some of these things are uh, often at times I've wondered. Let me quickly say this: I've wondered why our people have prioritized frivolities over what is really eccentric to the growth of our land. First and foremost, um, um, propagandas are what our people. Love and not knowledge. I don't. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. People should be able to understand that what I spill out on my platforms is supposed to inspire the generations to understand the very foundation of their heritage. Because I don't um, indulge in propaganda. All right, people who indulge in propaganda. I be respecting the society. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that. As you people have seen, I've not been very. I've not been very constant. I've been very business wise. Uh, I'm more interested in the growth of my business nowadays, and uh, I, I wouldn't apologize for that because our people have not been able to separate what is important to what is not important to them. Uh, Propaganda is what is very loud. To our people, propagandas are what interests our people, and I don't understand. I don't understand why, or people who, who, the entire essence of their living is steeped in culture and, and traditions, get interested in things that are inimical to the growth of their land. It's quite very, it's quite very bizarre to me. But however, like I always say, our people need to wake up. We sit on, we've not been able to understand what is important to us and what is not important to us. But I thank those who have been following me for a while. I'm sure that those who have been following me for a while can be able to attest it, that they have been able to learn a lot to, to teach all the people around them of the essence of who they are. All right. Um, let's see. Let's talk about Paidu. All right. The Biafra people have started and said that um, they own the, the, the concept of the Nidu nation because the world has appeared in the syllabus uh, of the Biafra people. Well, when I made, when I uh, publicized that um, that work. That work it's it's opened a lot of other other intellectual discussions, most especially from uh, other people who share some old historical ties with the Gala people. And uh, well, some of the most of the stories have been pleasing. Ten uh, percent of the stories have been pleasing. I like to put history in the right perspective and make people to understand. Uh, basically, uh, who Paidu was. First and foremost, I've said if you followed about three series I've done about Paidu and his children, Archive and Emi, I've made it very clearly that Idu was born in the present day Edo land. So Idu couldn't have been from any other tribe. There is an, there is an extant folklore that substantiates that. This is what we rely on. Utogwe, Utalaka, Evani Anabidu. This is a concept of what I've relied on. This is what our ancestors have passed on from generations to generations. I went further in one of the series to say that um, uh, the Obas of the old paid, were paying homage, not just the Obas, the Ugisos were paying homage to a priestly king that the Europeans of that time had referred to the, the, the great potentate of the interior. Of the interior. The great potentate of the interior. In about 1488, 
one of the most famous voyager. His name is called Bartolomeu Dias, a Portuguese sailor. Heard about the story of a king or a, a priestly king that the Abbas of Benin paid homages to. He heard about it. He heard about the story. That story was as a result of the legends of what some of the Edo people passed, more, most especially Oai Okun. Oai Okun, who was an ambassadorial representative of the Oba of Benin to the Portuguese monarchy, King John II. All right, he gave a report that at the installation of every Oba of Benin, they must go to a place to pay an homage to a king. All right. Now, there was a legend, uh, if some of you are not aware of the legend of Pesley King. All right. The entire Europeans are thought that as powerful as the Oba of Benin, who on earth would the Oba of Benin pay homage to, if not the legendary Pesley King? Um, but unknowingly to them that the Oba of Benin were paying homage to a man now regarded as the progenitor of the Edo people called Paidu, which the Europeans of that time has referred to as Ogene. There was a publication that was publicized by our Urubu brothers a few weeks ago. I was so busy I couldn't attend to it. Thank God, uh, Eri Mage, Mr. Paul, oh, sorry, Dr. Paul, Ibnewaka attended to. Some Urubos had said that um, one of the Obas of Benin was a, an Urubo person and they called it Oriogene. Well, I want to shock our Urubo brothers that Ogene is not an Urubo word. It's an Edoed word. It's an Edo word that is still commonly used was, sorry, not commonly. It's this parallel used amongst the Edo people. One of the appellations of the Oba of Benin is Obiogen and Nuhe. I've challenged a lot of Benin historians before now and after now that Uhe that was referred to in the history recorded by our forefathers, all right, and also being told or being documented by the Europeans has nothing to do with Yoruba land, has nothing to do with Ilefe or present, has everything to do with present-day Kogi state. I've said, I have said it a million times that the appellation of Yorgen and Uwe, nobody is referring to it, to anybody in Ocean State. It's, it's, it's Paidu that is Ogen and Uwe. So when, when Ober of Benin is being referred to as Obiogen and Uwe, he's been referring to the son of Paidu. I've said it severally. Our people, for whatever reasons, don't want to take the historical correction or historical mistakes some mm -hmm. of the earliest historians of Benin has made. We have no historical inclination towards Ocean State until the eras of the Calavera. What we've had, the relationship that we have had with the Uhe people has transcended beyond 10,000 years. And that was Paidu. So it is rather very misleading for people who do not know their history beyond 2,000 years or 3,000 years to not tell us the Edo people whose history has been well documented beyond thousands, thousands of years to say that they own Edo because it has been referenced, it has been acknowledged by their people. So Paido couldn't have been a small personality. Otogbe Otalaka Ewanya na bidura meo, 
Evania na bigura meo, Evania na biju. That is the folklore of the Edo people. The Edo people had understood that Edo was born, but for an extant years, people really did not know who gave birth to Edo. And I went further to say that the father of Edo is called A. 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 Means gain, means profit. <coughs> women gain profit what's the father of Idu he was a founder of Idu I've always asked a question that nobody has been able to answer. A few weeks ago, I asked a question. Explain. I asked a question. That what is the origin of the word Ota or Mai? Nobody has been able to answer. Dr. Paul Ibnewekar attempted to answer a what it means literally what it means is ota or my evening food or evening tide favored a the question was who is that a a lot of people had mistook a for gisho a or a that was not true there was an a that has been part of the very beginning of our history long before we started having kings in our land, God kings in our land. And that A is the founder of a place called Uhu Idum. Coincidentally, thousands of years later, Ogisoe also moved the palace to a place that was established by the A of that old. And that A of that old. Is the father of Taibu. But like I said, in those facts, because Idu was a prominent figure, the crony class of her history, the Ugoron, the vice a means of starting a recorded history of our people from the time of Idu and not transcending it beyond, they find a and making Idu as a personality. Uh, would, we, would, we, would we understand the concept? Do we understand the concept? A is a father. But he do play a remarkable role in the history of our people that made historians of the old allude that he do is a founder, is a pollinator of the Edoians. But even in the folklore, the stories that was passed on from generations to generations have been able to, to tell us the relevance of A, of a to Paidu. Paidu left Edo land and became a priest king or a priestly king at Uhe. Now get it. Uhe is not really a place. Uhe is more of an ideology. Get it. Uhe is not really a place. Uhe was more of like an ideological civilization. Everybody, the Igbos, the Yorubas, name a lot of ethnic groups that are existing, the Nupi, the Ibira, the, the Gala, all right? They all traveled, all right? They all traveled to a place. All of them 
collectively founded, all right, and they called that place Uhe. Like the beginning, like a place of abode, like the beginning. Uhe became a home for multi ethnicity, or, uh, okay, or multi multi ethnic civilization. Uhe was not founded by the Benin people alone, was not founded by the Gala people alone, was not founded. It became an ideology. You know, um, uh, it's just like uh, I am from Lamogun family. I left uh, a Lamogun family representative, a Laisho family representative, a Lavese representative, a Laire, a Lamosun, a Laogele, uh, uh, you know, all of them coming together to form an ideology. That ideology do not belong to only Lamogun family, no, do not belong to only Laisho family, it belongs to everybody. Who have became a place like a more a melting pot of various civilizations that nobody in the extant history can make clear mercy to. All right, each of these various ethnic groups produce kings and rulers that are ministered over the people. The Benin people produce their own leader, and they are the first leader of. The Uhe ideological civilization. I'm using the word ideological civilization because I don't want to call it a place. All right, the first people to produce the leader of that Uhe was the Benin people, and his name was Idu. Idu became the first king or the first ruler of a civilization that was formed. By multi ethnicity. So, being that the, the Edo people, the Benin people, the Godomiko people, the Edo people, was able to distinguish that this man is from their own ethnic group. They built a shrine for him. And that shrine, they call it Ogene Nuhe. Ogene is an Edo word that means someone in place of authority, a godlike figure. I've explained this a thousand times. A godlike figure, not God. You don't get, not God. The Yoruba people assume that Ogene is God, but the original idea or the original meaning of Ogene is not God, it's a godlike figure. So, to my Urobo brothers who feel that Ogene is an Urobo word, you're wrong. Ogene is our, all of our word. It's, 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 Ogene is an adored word. It therefore means that the Benin is a Benin word, is an Urobo word, is an Isoko word, is an Ikwiri word. It's all of the Edo and its descendant word. And it means someone in the place of authority. And that it was an appellation. That the Edo people at that time at Uhe gave to their own leader called Idu. Someone in place of authority. A godlike figure. Because they looked at him, they, they reverenced him, they looked at him like a god. So they built a shrine for him. And that shrine it was, it was regarded as Ogen and Uhe. And every Ogisos were regarded as Uyogen and Uhe, the sons of Paidu. Ogen and Uhe means Idu. I've always told the Benin people. It's just that they don't get to listen. They don't get to listen. And that's why the, the Igbos and the Yorubas use our history for propaganda. I've always said it. That's what it means. Ogen does not mean God. Ogen means. A godlike figure. Just like the Oba of Benin, we refer to him as God representative on earth. And that's what Ogene means. God is Osa. Ogene is a God representative. <laughs> I 
people need to listen. I might not repeat this topic in the next six months or one year. So listen. We have to learn what organ means. Organ and when the upper opinion is being regarded as organ and new hair, it therefore means that it is being what it means when you translate it. It means that the son of Paidu at Uhe. And that Uhe has nothing to do with Ile Ife. The families that greet La Uhe, I'm telling you today, the Uhe that you greet, La Uhe, has nothing to do with Ile Ife. In Ocean State. That is why Professor Obayami, one of the renowned Yoruba historians, said that which of the Ife. Like one of my Gala friends told me this morning that Ife is different from Ile Ife. According to the Galas, Ife is also regarded as Uhe in their own language. But in our language, we have maintained the originality of that word, Uhe. That is where, at the time, we had issues in our present day Adola. We migrated, we became our home for hundreds of years before we returned back. So, some of our Gala people, that one of two or three of our Gala, Gala friends, they were trying to say that the Benin people came from Uhe. And I was, no, 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 you are wrong. We didn't come from Uhe. In, in the first instance, where it's not a place, it's not owned by anybody. It's an ideological civilization. People came from different multifacets of the world, most especially in sub-Saharan Africa, and they came to form an, a civilization that is bounded by an ideology of survivor. All right, nobody owns Uhe. But because Uhe, became very spiritually dear to the Edo people. Subsequently, when we now stabilized in our Edo land, and I had kings, some of these kings, in order to maintain the purity and spirituality of their existence, continually traveled to Uhe to propitiate at the shrine of Paidu. And every year or every at every end of every the 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 and Uhe had a priest the Benins called Azama and I went further in the fact of Idu for you to understand that the lineage of the Oloton had direct lineage of the Azama who was one of the chief priests it's not like the way Oni is as a chief priest to Oduduwa. Just like Azamanoe was a chief priest to Paidu. So he was regarded as Azamanoe, the chief priest to the shrine of Paidu. So when it became uncomfortable, when Uhe started having a lot of these people who came together in the first place, all right, to form that civilization, now begin to emigrate, now begin to leave, who had not declined. And it was no longer convenient for the Abbas of Benin to pay tribute and homage to that shrine. Instead, what Obaiwai the first now did, who was the last Abbas of Benin that visited Uhe for a pilgrimage, what he now did, now did he now built a replica of that Uhe shrine, that at uh, that time, he now built a replica of that, um, what was it called? He built a replica of that um, shrine that was built for Paidu at Uhe. He then named it a Himidu because it was no longer convenient. It's just like if it's no longer convenient, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah, 
married by the man. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. When Nigeria is here now, I'll tell you. But, but never mind. Man, on my distance, so that uh, just in case I take part, this will be all right. Okay, like I was saying, because it was no longer convenient for the people of Uhe, all right, for the people of the Edo people, so a replica of that shrine was built in Benin, and it was called Eyidu. Eyidu now became the royal deity of the Edo people. So it's a very interesting thing for us to now talk about the genesis of our history because it's getting to a time. Time goes some of us are very much equipped even if we don't get to talk about it all the time. But please, let us pay attention and open our head to understand it. Taidu was born in Benin in a place called Otala. Otobo. There was a natural catastrophical phenomenon. There was a flood that even in the world historian that recorded it as a post Adamic cataclysm, the flood almost ruined the entire world. The Benin people experienced it. They needed to leave because we are close to the Atlantic shores. The close to the water body. We needed to move up north the present day Nigeria. We needed to move up north the present day Nigeria so as to survive the post atomic cataclysm. We were not the only people who moved. The, the Yorubas moved. The present day Yorubas moved. The present day Igbo people moved. Everybody moved. The Nupi people moved. The Gala people moved. And we met in a place which we all collectively had named Uhe. We all collectively had named Uhe. It became an ideological, an ideological civilization of survivor. Survivor because we needed to survive. We found a place that we all can cohabitate as a people. We all can cohabitate as a people. And that place was called Uhe. Nobody owned it. But the first ruler or the first leader of everybody that eventually came together was chosen from the Edo people and his name was Edu, our father. And it was that Edu who eventually died and was buried at Uwe, but he was not born there. He was born in Edoga. He was never born there. He was the one who led his people up north. All right? He was the leader of our people. And that's why he used to remember him very well. More than even the, his four years. We must get this fact very cleanly. We must get this fact very cleanly. He died there. A shrine was built from him for him. And a chief priest was given. And that chief priest was called Azama, the present ruler of Tons of Benin. After he reigned and he died, his people had built, he had children. It became very unstable because all the tribes produced leaders who wanted to sort of, I don't want to go through deep, wanted to exterminate the Edo people, most especially Taidu's sons. The Edo um, children and his relatives had no choice. Knowing fully well that the flood has rescinded, needed to travel back their lands. But don't forget all of these there was there was already cross-fertilization of ideas between all of these distinct ethnic groups at Uhe. So Uhe is a melting pot of various ideological civilizations. So if 
Anybody is not claiming a Jew. That they are a Jew. That means they are Benin. Because a Jew is Benin and Benin is a Jew. So we must pay attention to these very important details of our established ancestor to our established progenitor. Idu Atokbele. Idu is the father of every Benin man, Benin, do, Benin woman, and their descendants or its descendants. Not because he was the first man that God created and all of that. It is the first person that the history could visibly recognize as an Igbo person, as a Benin person, as an Igbo person, as an Igodo Nigodo person. And that's why it is convenient of the Asian keepers, the Uwaron people, the chroniclers of our history called the Uwaron people, they were able to keep that history that was passed down from generation to generation. I've been talking for 36 minutes. I'm already having headache. <laughs> Can't really shout. I'm already having headache. You know, I sang a song. I wish I'm a good singer. I would have been able to sing in a lot of these songs. Okay, so you help. I need, um, late on, eh, documented a lot of these songs. A folklore song. Uh, okay. Um, on, eh, also sang a song about, uh, Ogi, so do you help. You know, I think I sang it the other time. Okay, Kuheri, Monosia, Iwana, Onam Hiri, Uhe. Not Ilefe. The Benins understand clearly the difference between Uhe and Ilefe. <laughs> it's also very funny that our people now begin to mistake and they are doing proudly. The Benins understood, couldn't have mistook Ilefe for Uhe. It was too visible. The Ogisos of the old never traveled to present day Ocean State. Or, or, the Ilefe of Ocean State was not existing in the times of the Ogisos. They didn't travel there. They traveled up north. The history was passed down from generations to generations. That at every August or Sem no October every year, that the nobles and the king must, must go on a voyage, a pilgrimage to a place. It didn't start from the Obas. It started from the days of Ogiso. Starting from Ogiso, a. Eh. So it couldn't have been in Ilefe. Ilefe wasn't in existence at that time. The Benins have never had any interactions, notably recorded by any historian, both in Yoruba and Benin at that time of history. So there was a place that the Benins used to travel to that was never in present the western part of Nigeria or southwestern part of Nigeria. May this guy not off this gym. Yeah. Just a bit.